Guys, welcome back to Mikey Polis. Today we are here up at Sculvin Distillery up in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. We're doing a full craft distillery tour. We're gonna head inside. We're gonna talk with the owner, the founder. He's gonna show us around and we're gonna have a couple cocktails. So let's head inside. Hey, thanks for coming in. My name's Tyson. This is Sculvin Distillery and you're watching Things People Places. supposed to say distilled by, bottled by, or produced by, one of those three verbiages now mean different things. Yeah. Produced would be like, you know, you're adding flavor afterwards, doing something like that. Bottled is like you're bringing it in and bottling it, basically what we do with our whiskey. It says bottled by. Well, your average person isn't going to see that. We, you know, put in there, it's distilled in Indiana, something we don't have to say. Um, but we want to be as upfront about it as possible. And you'll yeah. see people that bring it in and they, you know, they'll put distilled by it because they know the odds of getting caught are pretty low. Pretty low. But you know, we do everything as ethically as possible. All the rest of our labels say handcrafted on the front of them. This one we said, no, we're not. Yeah. It's, you know, this, all the rest of them say small batch. This one's not small batch. Yeah. It's commercially made, very good whiskey. Uh, aged about three years. Uh, we do most of the mashing in this still. It's a 300 gallon uh, still, steam jacketed. Um, so we do the mashing in this, cooling. Uh, we'll do the stripping uh, runs for vodka and rum. Do the finishing runs on rum in this one. Uh, then once we we do what's called a stripping run, where we're basically just separating alcohol from all the, the rest of the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we take that and we put it into the vodka still, and then we run that and uh, it's able to make vodka. We got this uh, about about a year ago almost, and we've been problematic and hadn't been working right. And after a bunch of trial and error and throwing a bunch of money at it, finally we're running really well and we're able to distill it uh, basically at as high purity as you can get, which is about 191.4 okay. proof. Uh, so very high alcohol and, and purity, yeah. and it makes, a, it makes a really good vodka now. Thanks. We ferment over here, kind of by where my ladders are right now. Uh, our bottling line is right back here. This is stuff that we've been, this is rum that's getting ready to bottle. Uh, about 230 gallons of rum. We've got, uh, Bunch of vodka in that tank. I've got Akavit bourbon uh, ready to bottle over there. We do all the all the bottling right here. It starts off with an empty bottle. We've got our six boat filler, and as long as you're fast on bottling, you can just basically you're, you're just moving nonstop here. You basically, overwhelm the person at the corker, corks it, puts it on this machine, runs down, applies a shrink seal to it, shrinks it, labels it. We put it in the case and repeat thousands of times. That's just how you're at 400? Yeah, about 400 liquor stores. Uh, we've we picked up this machine three or four years ago. We're just about to hit 140,000 bottles on it. So it's, uh, you want to you wanna know a good way to get early onset arthritis. It's to uh, you know, sit there and grab liquor bottles nonstop all day, every day. It's, so once uh, you like once you do so once you start going, and it is like how long, legitimately nonstop is it, in what kind of one run until you finally also get a get a quick break? But oh, you mean if we're if we're just going? Yeah. If, if, if how we long have, will it take? I guess if we have the right, it, it all depends on the volume that we're doing. But if we're doing about a three hundred gallon tank, we can get that done in about three or four hours. Okay. Um, you have to be moving and, and that's make constant sure. constant three four hours. Oh yeah, and. You know, a couple little breaks in there, but it's, uh, you know, we, I've spent a long time working on the, uh, the logistics and the orientation of everything. Everything is one step away from everything else. It's, you know, the table's angled a little bit here just so when you're, when you're grabbing bottles here, it's less of a reach you know, the bottle filler. Same thing here, you just go, and it's like that, versus if this was completely straight, it's that extra six inches you have to move thousands of times. Yeah. Or if it's an extra step that you don't need to do, and you're just doing this all day, you'll, you'll obviously get a little bit of motion sickness if you're 
<laughs> taking that extra little step. Um, and it adds up, I, I did the calculations of, I think it was like shaving three inches off over here and three inches off over here equates to moving about a half mile less in a day. <clears throat> Just because you're, you know, you're constantly, constantly moving and everything's basically one step away. If you're here and say you're, you know, Someone needs a, a break or you know, you're, you're short on staff, you're just basically one step away from the packaging section. This conveyor we stick down on the other end and you'll go and load up the pallet over there, grab empty bottles, fill this person up, that table fills up, and it's, it's everything's kind of just all in, in harmony. Yeah. Uh, which is, is pretty cool to see actually running where there's no, I hate the term, there's no bottlenecks, there's no slowdowns, anything, and it's just, you know, like I'll, I'll know that this, this person gets backed up. I'm getting loaded up with bottles over here. I'll sit here and help this person for 10 seconds, fill the corks up, step over, resume bottling. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's quite an operation. Yeah, uh, and it's, you know, we've, everything used to be linearly and all in a straight line. Does that make sense? Assembly line. Yeah. You end up with this, you know, you're walking back and forth about a mile, you know, and. <laughs> You have to constantly move bottles and shift them down versus this all. You know, I've actually actually gotten rid of a lot of equipment by using this exact setup. So we used to have these bigger tables like this that spin around with bottles. I'm just going to set more on and we actually sold off two of them because we didn't need them if we made it more efficient. So, How long did it take to really get you dialed to this point? A couple years. Yeah. Uh, it's, cause it's, it's just, you know, going, I mean, literally with this, this table's you know, yeah, yeah, just shaved an inch and a half right there. And sometimes you'll go, okay, I'm gonna make a change, you know, either here, over there, whatever, you know, the height, just changing the height half an inch. You know, if I see someone like, you know, leaning down just a little bit every single time and just changing that and going like, sometimes I'll, I won't even tell them I did it. And like, hey, did you notice it was like, like yeah, I noticed I'm not, like, does this table higher? And like, I really like it. I'm like, cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it's, you make a change and like, yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's just not as, something feels off. And I'm like, okay, cool, I made a change and it didn't work. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you have to do a blind study to, to go, okay, you know, I could give you two vodkas right now and be like, hey, can you tell me which one's better? And you'll probably tell me one's better than the other instead of, you know, most people won't say these are the same, it's just human nature. Yeah. But, so it's kind of fun working on that and seeing the improvements. And there's, other than more automation, uh, which, is that delicate balance between do I have less people or more automation? Yeah. Um, but you know, more automation, I really don't see a way of speeding this up. So, you know, yeah. You know, I might be able to eke out a percent here or there, but is it worth it at the scale that we're at right now? Probably not. So that's, that's one big thing I really wanted to like portray with this channel is like there's so many people that probably drink it yeah. and don't quite understand really what it takes. Well, there's a ton of work for one bot, like you know. So that's there's a. There's an enormous amount of work that goes into it, and it's an enormous amount of... One thing about local is that there's a, a ton that goes into it. So here we are, we've got 5,800 50, square feet of, of space that we rent. Well, the, the gentleman stopped in as our property manager. You know, that's a job there. There's an administrator there, there's a maintenance person there. You know, if, if we need electrical work, like I'm waiting on my electrician to come out, that's a local, you know, small electrician, and plumbers, and. Our staff here, we've got a staff of about 10. And, you know, like our bottles, it's, these uh, are made down in Missouri. We don't use foreign glass, never have. You know, that's shipped up here by local truckers and it's warehoused in, in Brooklyn Center. Our packaging supplier that we deal with is just right over in Fridley. That's, you know, three or four jobs just right there. Yeah. You know, a courier brings it over here when we need more. Um, you know, we bottle it, do all that type of stuff. Stuff breaks, we get a maintenance person in to fix it, or we fix it. You know, got to go to the hardware store down the block. That's supporting more, more local jobs. And, you know, it is just a ton. Not even counting up, you know, our farmer and farm hands and everything, everything else that goes into that. And, yeah. you know, when you buy one of these bottles, a good chunk of that money does come back to the local economy. I can guarantee you, I spend it all. <laughs> uh, I don't, I, don't, I don't bring a whole lot home yet because um, I put it back into the business and, and try and grow it. But yeah. if you go buy one of these bottles you know, from some national or international brand, how much of that's coming back to Minnesota? The distributor gets a little bit of it, the liquor store gets a little bit, and that's about it. Yeah. You know? So that's awesome. Our, our, 
vacuum chamber uh, sealer here. Uh, this is a refrigerated centrifuge, so we can uh, uh, put food in there, centrifuge it, basically increase the, the effect of gravity by 3,200 times with that. Uh, it's refrigerated, so we can put food in there for hours on end without having to worry about it spoiling. Uh, and we use that a ton in the, in the cocktail room. Uh, we always basically say ABC, which is always be centrifuging. Um, so this thing's basically constantly running. This is called a, a rotary evaporator, which is basically just a vacuum distiller. And the way this works, let me throw this on there, it goes, is that we apply vacuum to this whole system, and when you reduce the, vac uh, the vacuum, or sorry, when you reduce the atmospheric pressure, the boiling point drops. And so we can reduce the, the pressure so much that we can boil water at room temperature. And basically turn it on, this thing spins around, increases the surface area of what's in there so it's gonna be more apt to, to boiling. And comes out here, condenses on the, the blue coils up there and collects down here. And what we're able to do with this is, like I said, we're able to boil at room temperature and that uh, lets us achieve two things. So number one, we're not cooking whatever we're putting in there. And we're also at a very low level of oxygen in there, so it's not going to oxidize. So chemical reactions happen at higher temperatures more frequently, and so if we can do that at a lower temperature. Uh, I can put stuff in there like fresh raspberries with alcohol and extract the flavor and aroma of fresh uh, sorry fresh raspberries in the alcohol without it tasting like it's boiled and you know. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's pretty cool. And stuff we use for some upcoming liqueurs and everything that we're gonna have in the, in the cocktail room. Uh, this is our small batch test still. It's also a essential oil extractor. And there's a lot of different stuff we can do with that without giving away too many secrets. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm kind of a chemistry, physics, science nerd. And we try and combine basically everything we can here. Uh, so in the cocktail room, Nelson, the gentleman right behind you, He's a chef from uh, uh, two different Michelin star restaurants. Uh, Dick is a sommelier and Bryce is a super talented bartender over there. So we have science nerd, super good chef, sommelier, and a bartender all coming together. Instead of being, putting them in different corners of a restaurant, yeah. put them all in one place and see what happens, right? Because it's all the same. It's texture, aroma, flavor, you know, food. Yeah. You're, you're plating all that stuff. So. We come up with some pretty wild stuff. The the still that we originally started with is that one over there, which is now just a decoration in the cocktail room. And uh, that's a uh, decoration now when we upgraded this system. So that still over there, for me to do two runs on it, uh, it's 150 gallons, but it only do about 110, 120 gallons each time. To do two runs on it would take about 15 to 16 hours, so super long days. Yeah. Uh, this still at 300 gallons, so more than double the, the operating capacity of that one. I'm going to do a run on this one in four and a half, maybe five hours, if I, if I have it dialed in a little too slow. So I can do in one day what would take me basically you know, four days of, of work on that one. So it's, uh, it helps out quite a bit. I'm, yeah. I'm still here late at night, you know, you know, midnight or whatever, running the stills, but. Uh, I'm sure you always kind of do that though, especially when it's your. Yeah, it's always. Yours. It's yours. You got it. It's uh, got to gotta always be working. They say a small business owner, you work 80 hours a week at least. So you don't have to work 40 hours for someone else, so. Right.
shape to make the you know pepper clear look yeah, and all that. Like, okay, we need this and, and I need that and this equipment. What I eventually found is that okay, well, I would never make enough money. So it's rum, lime, mango, chili, and salt, essentially all in there. Guatemala put it in a bag and shake it. So it's got all that in there, except the rum in the Guatemala. And then uh, that's chamoy, which is uh, stone fruit and chili puree. We're just making a little dip in dots and then flowers. Poisonous flowers. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy. It's very, very toxic. Good luck with it. <laughs> um, but so I, I re All right, guys, that is going to wrap today's episode of Things People Places here on Mikey Polis. Appreciate you tuning in today. It was awesome meeting Tyson and the entire staff here at the distillery. Their drinks are unlike anything I've had. The level of creativity and craft in these cocktails is unbelievable and it's something that I don't even think the video is going to do it justice where you got to come in here. It's up in Brooklyn Park. Um, we're off uh, Boone Avenue just north of 694. Highly recommend coming in, telling them that Mikey Pola sent you. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you dig the content today, please hit that thumbs up button. Hit that red subscribe button to not miss the next adventure. And with that, we'll see you on the next video. Bye.